Hey guys, welcome back to the Ace Podcast. I'm your host, Darren Joe. Thank you so much for being here and for listening. And on this show, what we do is talk about the self-employed creative life and how you can do your best work, how you can build your career, how you can take care of your well-being as well. What I want to do on this episode is share a six-minute excerpt from my audiobook called The Fail Safe Solopreneur. Before I share that excerpt from the book, I want to just share some of my experience and learnings from accomplishing a life dream of becoming a published author. So in 2017, my business made the most revenue ever that year. And even though I should have been ecstatic and you know super excited, I actually found myself to be lost and kind of asking a lot of questions about purpose. And I was very lonely that year. And, you know, I realized then that I needed to define my own rules of success, right? I had to come to my own conclusions about what living a great life meant, that I couldn't rely on others to do that for me. And at that time, I you know, started writing a book. And it was a book for myself. It was called 37, because I was 37 at the time, slash Be the Change. So cheesy. (laughs) I know. It was titled 37 Be the Change, a nobody's humble book of wisdom. And I laugh, like, thinking about this title. And even the first chapter of this book was about how... I had no right to to even write a book. I, I wasn't famous. I hadn't made a lot of money. I hadn't really accomplished anything. So, you know, why would anyone want to read this book? But I must write this book because this book is intended for one person, and that's myself. For me to really write down what success meant to me and how I could achieve that. And so I wanted to keep a record of that for myself, for my future self. So I started doing that in 2017. And then through those writings, this idea of the perfect day really invaded my consciousness inception style. You know, I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I started to ask, you know, over the next few years, dozens of people about their perfect day. It didn't, I didn't care who they were or didn't matter where they were from. I just wanted to ask more people about the good life through this lens of the perfect day. And then cut to a year or two later, I started writing about The Perfect Day. I, I, I thought I had this book that it would be really interesting to interview a thousand people and compile all these interviews and draw out the lessons of living a perfect day. Um, and I thought this was a really interesting book idea. But the idea of writing a book was just so damn intimidating. Like, I, I didn't even know where to start. It just seemed like uh, too big of a mountain to climb. So I said, okay, Darren, well, why don't you, you know, try to publish one blog post every few weeks? And, and so that's a lot more manageable. Uh, so I started doing that. I started writing about the perfect day. And so I started that in July 2019. Cut to April of 2020 um, as the pandemic was just starting to really affect the world. I said, okay, now's the perfect time to write a book. So I started writing this book about the perfect day. It was called The Perfect Day Playbook, and I you know, took a lot of my writing from the blog posts I'd written, from a lot of my interviews, and I spent three hours every morning writing this book, laboring on it, really. In November 2020, so about six months later, I felt like I had the first draft, and I gave it to one of my best friends, John. He's the best writer I know and uh, one of the best editors I know, and I asked him for his feedback, and that weekend... He sent me back a Word document full of notes, and then we had a a two-hour conversation about the book. And he basically told me, he said, Darren, look, I found the most interesting parts of this book to be when you share your personal experiences, not when you're summarizing other people's books or other people's lessons, but when you're talking about your own experiences And specifically, he was talking about one chapter from the Perfect Day Playbook, which was called The Four Horsemen. And in this chapter, I discuss 
dealing with what I call the four horsemen of entrepreneurship, which are failure, anxiety, instability, and loneliness. This like four-headed monster that I never expected, but that had been part of my entrepreneurial journey for the past 10 years, you know, working virtually and on my own. And he thought that chapter was by far the best chapter. And he encouraged me to write more stories, share more personal stories. He said, Darren, like, I know you, so I can relate to other parts of the book where, you know, you give certain advice, but if someone doesn't know you, why would they listen to you? And that was really powerful advice. So I sat on that for a week and then came back a week later, opened up a a new pages document and called it Stories. And that was to remind me to, to write more stories, write more stories, write more stories to make the point, which is honestly, it was uncomfortable writing that way because I'd never really, well, I guess I had done it, but I'd never considered it to be effective or the main part of my writing. So yeah, I was really digging, <laughs> digging into my past and my relationship with my parents and relationship with past bosses and the ups and downs of my journey and really trying to be unflinchingly honest about some parts of that experience. And uh, after four months, I said, okay, I think this is something. I don't know what the name of this book will be, but I think this is something. And I gave it to a few close friends and a few acquaintances, got their feedback, which was very positive, changed and adjusted the book based on their feedback. And then said, okay, let's launch this thing. And I called it the Fail Safe Solopreneur. Again, F stands for failure, A for anxiety, I for instability, L for loneliness. And so how can we design kind of fail safe practices, right, to deal with these downsides, the, these emotional challenges, the emotional roller coaster of being a self-employed creative person, of running your own business. And it took another month to get a cover done, get illustrations, you know, learn how to format a book for a paperback book, learn how to format a Kindle book, learn how to put something up on Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, that took way longer than expected. Long story short, and this has been a long story. Thanks for indulging me. April 15th, 2021, I saw my Kindle go up on Amazon. I was at a Starbucks right around the corner from my house. I wasn't expecting to see it because it takes Amazon, they say it takes 36 hours for your manuscript to be approved. And it had only been 12 hours. Voila, it, it was up. I just had been refreshing Amazon over and over and over and then boom, it was there. And that moment I will never forget. It was Friday, 5 p.m. at the Starbucks. I, I was shocked then kind of flooded with feelings of, um, I I couldn't quite describe it, I guess joy. I mean, it, this whole thing started in 2017 as the seed of an idea of writing a book. And back then I, as I mentioned, like, I, I didn't think anyone would care. I didn't think I was worthy of even writing a book. And there it was up on Amazon. And there my cheeky smile was up on the, you know, Amazon author page. And it was uh, just a feeling I'll never forget. And I was, I just couldn't do anything. When I saw my book up there, I closed my laptop, put my laptop in my backpack, and I was just walking home on the same street that I've walked home hundreds of times. And I could see the color of the leaves again. I could hear what people were saying again. It wasn't just, you know, unintelligible noise and the, 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 the sky seemed a different color. It was me just uh, being in this state of euphoria, but it was also, you know, I was back in the world. I had accomplished this goal again. So like that space that had been occupying my mind to, to get this thing done, get this thing done, get this thing done was finally freed. Um, so I could like be in the world again. I sat down at this 75 cent uh, like noodle stall on this low plastic stool and I'm eating my bowl of noodles and the sun is is setting and I'm by myself no one else but me knows the book is up on Amazon and I just have this like huge smile on my face and I'm sure people around me were just like well, what is this guy's deal but I had that moment and no one can take that from me that 
I'd accomplished this life dream of writing a book and becoming a published author. I had a book up on Amazon. It was just me and and God or the universe and and we we had that moment together that I'd brought this thing to life and accomplished a life dream and I'll I'll never forget that Friday afternoon. But then, you know, that weekend I had a like weekend vacation with my dance crew, we went to a town about a few hours outside of Ho Chi Minh, stayed at a resort, hung out by the pool, played games, ate meals together, just had a wonderful time with my dance friends. And then, you know, coming back to the city after that weekend, you know, looking at Amazon and, and realizing that the Failsafe Solopreneur was the number one new release under work-related health, which was one of the two categories I had I had selected for the book. I mean, this was incredible. I mean, it was because my friends were so generous and had read advanced reader copies and submitted their reviews and a few of them bought the book. And so it had launched the book to to be number one in a category on Amazon. That was a thrilling feeling. Of course, I like screenshotted the ranking and I was just trying to ride that wave and, you know, get the word out to my friends and family that I published a book and um, you know, announce it on social media, et cetera, et cetera. And then I realized that parts, the formatting of the book wasn't that great, so I had to redo the formatting. And then you know, I found some typos in the book, so I had to like correct the book. And then I realized a lot of people wanted the audiobook, so I, I sat down to record this audiobook, which I'll be sharing with you shortly. And that took way longer than expected. That took, uh, that took a few weeks. And so it just went on and on and on. I thought that I would just be able to, you know, naively publish the book and just that would be it. But of course not, right? It doesn't stop. I still need to market the book and get the word out. And, and you know, I want it to help a lot of self-employed people. So it's about how can more people find out about the book and hopefully resonate with the message. So that's another year of work <laughs> coming up. But the reason I shared this is because... I think we fool ourselves into thinking that once we accomplish something or once we get to a certain stage, everything will be all right. You know, whether that's making $5 million, whether that's buying a house, whether that's writing a book, you know, whether that's creating a a piece of art, whatever that thing is, that life dream is for you, uh, you know, maybe it's living in a country for a few years. I mean, it doesn't stop, does it? I mean, I, I will forever have that Friday afternoon moment where I became a published author and no one can take that from me. That's, that's an amazing feeling, but life goes on and the next challenges pop up and the next dreams come into your your being into your mind and it doesn't stop because you're evolving and you keep growing. So I I just, I think what I've realized, it's been a month since I published the book. And um, I think what I realized is this paradox of setting goals to achieve and pushing yourself to be more and do more. But at the same time, you, you get there and you realize, all right, like, not much has changed. So I I have to tell myself to enjoy it. Enjoy the journey along the way. You're never really going to arrive, right? Because there will always be another challenge, another goal to meet. So why not feel like you've arrived the entire time? (laughs) I think that would make work and life a lot easier. And then one last thing I want to say about the book is When you're making something and you're expressing yourself the way so many of you are as creators, it's it's scary. I mean, to open up and share parts of my life with complete strangers and even close friends, it's almost harder to share these things with close friends, these stories about you and your parents or you and your bosses and you and your kind of demons in life. But if you have a message that you feel you know, so compelled to share, or you're going to write a book, then say the damn thing, right? Don't 
Don't hold back. Stephen Pressfield, who is an author of a bunch of best-selling books, was on Tim Ferriss's podcast. And one line that he told Tim that really stuck with me was, I want to share it here. He said, he talks about going big if you're going to write a book because he thinks the muse likes it. Fortune favors the bold. And he thinks that when we try for something big, we're taking the initiative and we're invoking a tailwind behind us. Whereas if we're kind of timid and we say, oh, well, just let me do this little small thing that I'm going to do, he doesn't think the muse responds to that. And I, I think I agree 100% with what he's saying. Every time, and this book is one of them, every time I've been really nervous or scared to publish something, uh, whether it's this book or a podcast episode, those tend to get the best response those tend to be the most impactful pieces of work. And that's something I've realized that for my next book to just go, go for it, don't hold back one bit. Be bold with what you're trying to create and, and with your message and go you know, commit 100% to it. It's hard for me because I'm always very conscious of what other people think. But I realize, yes, fortune really does favor the bold when it comes to creative work. So enough of my musings. Uh, That went on way longer than expected. Now I want to share part of my audiobook with you. This is a six-minute excerpt from my book, The Fail-Safe Solopreneur, Six Essential Practices to Manage Your Well-Being Working for Yourself. It's from practice three, which I call, Can You Manage Yourself Better Than a Boss?, And this is about dealing with stress, anxiety, and performance working on your own. This book, again, it's based on 10 years of working virtually and independently. Um, I haven't had a job in 10 years, and I consider that an accomplishment. And uh, the book offers a practical guide on how to deal with the downsides of entrepreneurship, such as failure, anxiety, instability, and loneliness. The audiobook is narrated by me. And you can get the book on Amazon in Kindle and paperback and in audiobook form on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. And uh, the links are below. So I hope you enjoy this excerpt from The Fail Safe Solopreneur. Practice three Can you manage yourself better than a boss? Dealing with Anxiety, Stress, and Performance When I was 25, I was lucky to be recruited by a prominent businessman to work in New York City. He was vice chairman of the world's largest scientific publishing company, with 7,000 employees across the globe. I would be his analyst and help the company improve its reputation with academics, librarians, and government officials around the world. I met with him on a Saturday morning after arriving from a 20-hour flight from Beijing. After welcoming me to the Park Avenue headquarters, he handed me a brand new BlackBerry. It was smooth and sleek, the nicest phone I'd ever had. Please keep this with you, he told me. Three months later, I'm working out at the gym. I had decided to leave my BlackBerry at home. I needed a break. Each incoming email would trigger a blinking red light. Most were from my boss. He was tireless waking up at 5 a.m. to catch the morning train from New Jersey into Manhattan and then leaving late at night after leading a number of community engagements. His responsibilities, output, and response time were astounding. But for me, it was nerve-wracking. I was one red blink away from grinding his machine to a halt. I finished an hour-long boxing class and then enjoyed a long, cool-down stretch. The workout and mental space was wonderful. The next day, my boss summoned me into the office. Why didn't you respond to my message last night? Oh, shit. Um, I was at the gym. A long pause. He stared at me, incredulity morphing into disgust. Darren, you know why I got you that Blackberry, right? I knew the answer, but was too proud to answer. Don't do it again. We all have awful boss stories. And most of us choose to work for ourselves so we never have to report to someone ever again. 
But the irony of self-employment is you need to manage yourself better than a boss. Your livelihood and well-being count on it. It's a strange situation to be in. No one is watching you. You don't have to get to work by 8 a.m. or respond to anyone. You set the rules. Want to work in your underwear all day? Go ahead. On the flip side, your business is all-consuming. Fire here. Your website is down. Fire there. Your bank account is frozen. Fire. A customer needs a reply. And on and on. You can never escape it. And when you do, even for an afternoon or weekend, you feel guilty for leaving your baby behind. You can always do more. That's the paradox of working solo. You need to use all your faculties to get work done and to stop working. Like holding two opposing ideas in your mind, it's difficult to honor both. I found that willpower can only take me so far. Just as companies need strong corporate governance to stay on target, I need reporting structures to keep me accountable. I must also institute checks and balances and rituals to keep me from self-destructing and do all this without a boss because I'm never going back. Take time off seriously. Hustle, grind, crush it. Bullshit. Asking entrepreneurs to work nonstop from morning to night until their business succeeds is horrible advice. That's like asking a professional athlete for his or her peak performance eight hours a day, six days a week, for months on end. Humans are not machines. Our energy waxes and wanes, and we need deadlines to signal rest and recovery. Because business never stops, I set finishing lines, 7 p.m. on weekdays, 2 p.m. on Saturdays, and absolutely no work on Sundays. More than anything, this is to give myself permission to rest. It's okay. I remind myself that I chose this life so I could watch a movie Monday afternoon or dance in the park Friday as the sun sets. Each week, I schedule playtime before work time. You need to refuel your tank, not just to survive, but to do your best work. For most of us, our careers are marathons. It's about staying in the game long enough to strike gold. We have to be skilled, present, and prepared to catch the few big waves that will make all the difference. Sure. Sometimes you'll need to sprint and push harder than normal, but those sprints should be matched with proportionate intervals of rest. Limiting work time reminds me that work is precious and that I only have so many good hours a day to make something people cherish. When time runs out, I look forward to tomorrow. The more limits I set on work, the more productive I am. Without limits that make it scarce, work becomes a chore, or worse, my default mode of being and complete identity. I've learned to take vacations as seriously as my business, too. Vacation gives you a finish line to look forward to. Every quarter, I schedule in one full week of disconnected, guilt-free rest. I always come bouncing back with new ideas and a renewed sense of purpose. Purposeful disengagement is necessary to feel full engagement at work. Michael Gelb, author of How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci, Ask thousands of people when they get their best ideas. And most people responded, quote, in the shower, resting in bed, walking in nature, or listening to music, leisurely activities. Almost no one replied, at work. Guilt-free time off is necessary for peak performance and a richer life. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please press subscribe and leave us a review on your podcast app. It helps more people discover the show. Also, you can find all the show notes and links mentioned in this episode at upstartist.tv ace. That's A-S-E. Hope to see you there.